I know what you're thinking, Jeremy, that lighting is horrible. What is going on? Well, I'm trying to demonstrate, because today we're gonna be talking about lighting, and we're gonna be talking about how to take your lighting from looking like this to something a little better like this, with only two lights from one of my favorite lighting and gear manufacturers, Aperture. All right guys, so like I said, today we are gonna be talking about lighting, Two lights in particular, they're both from Aperture, they're in their Amaran series. We are looking at the Amaran 672S and the Amaran 198C. Before we get cracking into the video, a couple quick things. One, at the end of this video, I am gonna talk about the details of the 10,000 subscriber giveaway. Finally got all those details ironed out. Really excited to go into that a little bit more in the end of the video. The kind folks at Aperture were awesome enough to give me lights for the giveaway, and they did give me these this set here to review for this video. So just for full disclosure, uh, all this stuff was given me free of charge. However, I've been a fan of Aperture long before I ever had any relationship with them. The 120D that you see back there that I use, the microphone that I'm recording this on, the Mini 20 kit that I use a lot, all that stuff I bought with my own money prior to ever having any kind of relationship with Aperture. So everything in this video, any opinions I state, completely my own. Before we go into the details on lights, let's look at what these lights are doing in this setup so you can kind of see what, what we got going. So first, let me turn off the main light. Let me turn off this light up here. Goodness gracious. I can barely reach. I'm too short. Oh God, that's the color temperature. With none of the lights on, this is what we're looking at. Uh, obviously, this would not work. Too dark, you can barely see any details in my face. Absolutely useless for video purposes. Unless I'm doing one of those confession videos where they make my voice sound all weird like this because I'm uh, testifying on some mob guys and I don't want somebody to come to my house and kill me. <laughs> Unless I'm doing that kind of video, this is useless. Up here, the 198C, I have mounted on a boom pole over top of me, and what I'm doing is using that as a hair light. Now, what a hair light's for, it's not meant to be crazy bright. It's just meant for you to add a little something up above you. It adds a little bit of accent on my hat and on my shoulders, and what it's meant to do is just kind of accentuate your silhouette and pop you out from the background just a little bit. And I've got this one set on a little more of a warm light to make some contrast between the cool blues in the background. Now, that's the 198C. Now the big boy, the 672S, when I add that in, voila. That's my main key lighter, my main light. That's what's lighting the majority of the set. As you can see, super bright, plenty bright enough to be your main key light. Just to show the versatility of this light uh, and the LED panel that it is, I have this thing in what Aperture calls their space light diffuser. It's kind of this lantern looking thing. And the panels actually aim, aim straight down and I kind of rigged the space light over top of it. Space light's not even meant for that light. It's meant to go on the 120D, but just to kind of show the versatility of what you can do with some of this gear, I just kind of set that over top of it. And that's working to diffuse this light and kind of radiate soft light. So getting into the details on these bad boys, the first one we're gonna go over is the 672S. Now they call it the 672 because it has 672 LED bulbs in it. Very nice, compact, LED panel. It's not too big, not too small. It's kind of right there in that Goldilocks zone of being a good size panel, but not being big and unwieldy. It's actually about the size of an iPad. It pumps out 18,800 lux at 0.5 meters. That's about the equivalent of a 400 watt tungsten light, just for reference. That's bright. I mean, that's at least one and a half to two minute on the blue dot scale. Uh, and if you're wondering what the heck that is, the blue dot scale is if you look at it, how long before your vision goes back to normal without just seeing a big blue dot in the middle. And it's gonna be a while. It's like looking at the sun. It sears your retinas. This thing's bright. As far as the color on this thing goes, it is a 5500K light. This is a single light version, not the bicolor version. So you're just dealing with 5500K, which is a very nice white daylight kind of light. It has a 25 degree beam angle, which is nice and spotty. It's actually a pretty narrow beam angle, which is kind of nice because it gives you some versatility. You can either use it undiffused and it gives you more of a spot, or if you diffuse it and put some softness behind it, that's gonna really spread that thing out, give you a nice soft wrap. 
Aperture in their technological wizardry have made this a flicker free light, which if you don't know, some LEDs, uh, when you're recording at certain frame rates, will have a flicker to them, which is super annoying. When you watch the video footage back, you, you, it looks like you're gonna have a seizure because there's all this flickering going on. It happens with my keyboard lights, it happens with lots of lights. Even at a very high frame rate of around 180 frames a second, these lights are still gonna give you nice even light. There's not gonna be any of that flickering, which is really, really nice. Also on the 672, you're gonna have quarter 20 mounts on three of the four sides which makes it really nice because it gives you versatile mounting solutions. As you could see from earlier, these lights are remote control, which is one of my favorite things about a lot of these aperture lights. This remote control is great. From this remote, you can turn the lights on and off. Awesome. You can adjust the brightness. If it's a bicolor light, you can adjust the, the temperature of the light. You can hook multiple lights up to this thing and control them either individually or put them all in a group so you control them all together. Huge. Another great feature of this light is it has dual power options. So you can either power this light with two NPF, Sony NPF style batteries, or it's got wall power. So if you're running and gunning or you're moving about, you can run it off the batteries. If you know you're gonna be in one spot and you have access to wall power, you can run it off that so you don't have to worry about batteries. Uh, another really sweet thing about that that I just found out recently, when the batteries are in the back, when you're hooked to wall power, it's actually charging those batteries, even if the light's running which I thought was an awesome feature. So if you have the batteries in the back and you're plugged up, your batteries are always at 100%, which I just found that out and I was like, mind blown. If we flip this guy around in the back, we've got the battery plate where your two NPF style batteries are gonna attach. We've got your port for your AC wall power. We've got a nice wheel that's gonna let you adjust your brightness from 10 to 99%. It's got a battery indicator, so we're always gonna know what's going on with our battery. It's got a power switch, which by the way, I might be weird, but it's clicky. And for some reason that's satisfying. Clicky switches are satisfying to me for some weird reason. Maybe I'm... And then you have buttons for your channel and group, which again goes back to that remote and being able to control these lights and put them in groups you control them all together or independently now in the box what you're going to get and this is one thing that aperture really excels at i'm not sure some how they make lights of this quality and include the stuff they do and still make money on these lights but i'm happy they do but what you're going to get in this one is two npf style batteries and they're the big dogs they're not the little wimpy ones they're big stout npf style batteries you're going to get a power supply the remote control you're going to get a light mount and a spigot you're going to get a clear and tungsten diffuser which slides into the front this is a slide style light and then last but not least you're going to get a super nice like heavy duty nylon carrying case that all this stuff fits in which I think it's just a great thing about Aperture. They almost always include really nice cases with their stuff, which I think is huge. So the cons on this light, everything has cons. Um, one, the LEDs are exposed, which could lead to possible breakage. I'm not 100% thrilled about that. Uh, when you have the diffusion plates on there, it does kind of cover them up. I've noticed on a lot of Aperture's newer lights, they always include uh, kind of a clear plastic on the front to protect them, which I think is kind of a better thing to do. Uh, these are exposed. so. So not a huge thing, but could potentially lead to you breaking an LED bulb if you're not careful. The other con, which you could consider a con, or you could just say that's just the way it has to be because they are really lightweight, is it's it's kind of plastic. It seems like it's made of good quality plastic, don't get me wrong, but it also is plastic, so it's not gonna take real heavy duty abuse like something made of like aluminum. Again, that's a double-edged sword because it is made of plastic and it's light. You don't have to have big heavy duty light stands. You can mount it pretty much anywhere, so Take it for what it is. I mean, I'm not gonna complain, especially the price point they're giving this thing at. It's it's a great light. Now on to the 198C, which is basically the little brother of the 672. Uh, very similar style light, very similar construction, just way smaller. The 672, 672 LEDs, 198, 198 LEDs. This one dials in at 3,430 lux at 0.5, which, isn't as bright as the 672 obviously but still really bright especially for how small this light is and still a good minute on the blue dot i mean if you look at this thing you're still not seeing anything but blue for a minute so don't stare at it don't look at it shut your eyes mary and don't look at it now the 198 is the c which means it is bicolor so unlike the other light which is 5500k constant this one you're going to be able to adjust from 3200k up to 5500k it does have a wider beam angle this one's about 65 degrees which isn't going to be very spotty it's going to be a lot wider more of a flood kind of light which if you are using it as an on-camera light or something that's probably something you want anyway 
Same plastic construction, which makes it really lightweight, but this one does have a clear plastic cover over the LEDs, which makes them, in my opinion, a little more durable because those LEDs are covered up from getting hit with stuff. Now, the 198 doesn't have quarter 20s. You're gonna have female cold shoes on all four sides of this one. And it also comes with a male cold shoe to quarter 20 kind of adapter. So you could slide that in either of the four sides, which gives you very versatile mounting options. Other cool thing you can do with this light that's pretty neat is because it's on all four sides and it's got that little adapter, you can also connect these together like some kind of transformer and you could have one panel or connect them all together into one big panel, which is pretty neat. I think the intent for this one is more run and gun type shooting. Uh, it has the cold shoe adapters where you can mount this thing right to a camera and it's completely small enough for you to put it right on top and do use it as an on-camera light. They've given you dual power options on this one, but the dual power options are a little different. Instead of being AC and NPF style, battery this one takes an NPF or six double A's and I think the thought process behind that is if you're running and gunning with this light you're probably not gonna hook this thing up to wall power and if your rechargeable batteries all go dead you can go to any Walmart or Target or any place that has batteries slap six double A's in there and it doesn't take you down you can keep on shooting now if you turn this one around you're gonna see some little bit of different stuff on the back you're still gonna see your battery plate which takes your NPF but if you flip that up there's gonna be your compartment to take your your double A batteries and on this one you got two Two knobs. Because this is a bi-color light, you're going to see one knob that you're going to be able to smoothly control your color and you're going to be able to adjust it all the way from that 3200 up to 5500K. And then below that, you're going to have your brightness knob where you're going to be able to adjust your brightness. It's also got a push button style battery indicator where you're going to push and hold that button. It's going to give you the dilly on your battery status. This thing is small. It is, and that's one of the good features about it, is it's small enough to where you can put it back in a little on a little shelf or a little crease or a crevice or whatever and get it in a spot that you might need a little light that you wouldn't be able to fit a bigger light. That's really the benefit of both of these lights. It's one of the reasons why I use these panel lights sometime instead of my big 120D, which don't get me wrong, I absolutely adore that light. Something that both of these lights have in common is their 95 plus CRI rating. Now, if you don't know what CRI rating is, it's color rendering index. And basically what that means is how color accurate these lights are, meaning a lot of lights will have a bit of a color tinge to it. So when you record stuff with a light, it'll look have a little bit of a green tint to it or a magenta tint. And that is a nightmare to try to fix in post-production. You end up looking like a damn Oompa Loompa, and it's just horrible to try to correct. One of my favorite things about all these Aperture products is they put a lot of emphasis on a high CRI rating, which makes them very color accurate lights. Big thumbs up to Aperture for that. But what do you get in the kit with this one? This one, you're gonna get a clear diffuser that snaps right on the front, that little hot shoe to quarter 20 type adapter thing I was talking about. And you're gonna get a nice little ball head mount, which is really nice for you know versatile mounting solutions to be able to aim the light wherever you want. And in true aperture style, they include one of their high quality nylon carrying cases for everything to go in. Okay, so a couple negatives on these little lights. One, again, same as the other light, they are plastic construction, so probably not the most heavy duty lights in Aperture's arsenal, but sufficiently heavy duty. And like I was mentioning before, it's a trade off with heavy duty versus lightweight and portable. So, you know, you got to kind of give and take a little bit there. Uh, also, no wall power, which is a little bit of a bummer. Uh, I know they probably did that because of the run and gun nature of the light. I kind of wish they would have just thrown a little wall power plug back there so in a studio environment you could have still plugged it up to wall power and not had to sweat batteries. And lastly, and I kind of even hate to say this because I've never had a problem with it, but I can kind of see potentially a problem, so I thought I would point it out, is the way these diffusers mount on the front of this light, they kind of snap on with these little plastic snaps. I just feel like long term, those may not hold up. You may find that those crack and, you know, you have a problem there. Like I said, it's never happened to me, so I hate kind of saying it, but it does seem like a potential weak point, so it's worth mentioning. And I have noticed that with most of Aperture's new stuff, they use more of a magnetic system where they just magnet to the front, which I think is probably more durable and a better solution. All that wrapped together, they're a great little light. All right, so that's you know about it on the details of these lights. And just to say a little more about this kit kind of together, and this ties into the giveaway we're about to talk about. Uh, these lights together make for a great little kit because of the high quality of the light, uh, the high output, and the ability to be able to do multiple setups with these two little portable lights. You know, I have a much more expensive and, and my dear 120D back there, which I absolutely adore, don't get me wrong, but I find myself using this setup sometimes just because it's 
portable and small. You know, my 120D with the light dome, I mean, that thing, you got to have a landing strip to park that thing in, baby. It is, it's got some size on it, um, which is part of what makes the light so great. But um, anyway, it's large. This little 672 panel with, you know, like a little lantern like this hanging on it or a, a little bit of diffusion in front of it to soften up the light. It's light. It weighs nothing. I don't have to sandbag the stand. I don't have to have a big C stand, just a little cheap newer stand uh, holds it up just fine. And I can fit it anywhere and move it around. Uh, same with the little 198. You know, I can rig this with a boom pole over top of me and not have to worry about a lot of weight being at the end and really weighing that thing down to where it's got to be heavily sandbagged. So, you know, just really versatile, great little lights. All right, guys. So one of the best parts of this video is the details on this 10,000 subscriber giveaway. Aperture has been kind enough to donate a 672, a 198, and one of their lav mics as kind of a creator bundle is what we decided to call it. You could have a $10,000 camera and if you've got crap light and crap sound, your video is gonna look like garbage. If you're new to doing this and you don't have a lot of gear, this is an awesome piece of kit to, to get you going on producing high quality videos. And if you've been doing it for a while and you have a lot of gear, this is still great stuff and it's gonna be a good addition to your kit. So I'm super pumped pumped about uh, being able to do this. I greatly appreciate all of my subscribers and I thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch my videos. This is just a way for me to say thank you and give a little something back to my subscribers. And thanks again to Aperture for providing this stuff. Super awesome to them to donate this stuff and sponsor this giveaway. There's gonna be a link below this video that I'm gonna put in the box down below and you're just gonna click that and it's gonna take you to the details. All you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna to have to like this video, you're gonna to need to be a subscriber to my channel obviously, and please go check out our sponsor Aperture's YouTube page and subscribe to them. Uh, there are also going to be several other ways that you can get multiple or additional entries into the competition, which will just beef up your chance of winning. So again, click that link. It's going to have all the details on how to, how to enter. As always, guys, if I forgot something, feel free to ask questions in the comments below and I will answer them as quick as I possibly can. If you did find this video useful and entertaining, please feel free to smash that like button. If you're not a subscriber, please consider doing so. We'd love to have you on board. All right, guys, that's it for me today. I hope everybody has a fantastic week and we will see you in the next video.